Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to day four of the local lead generation challenge. So hopefully you have been with me since day one. And if that's the case, then you probably have a much better understanding just from our first three days, what it's going to take for you to start generating your own leads with effective Facebook and Instagram ads. However, that is really not the goal of any of this. So if you ask a business owner what they're looking for from their marketing, if they answer leads, they're not thinking about the question completely. And the truth of the matter is that the only thing they're looking for is paying customers or return on investment. Everyone should be looking at their marketing from the perspective of return on investment. Two different ways to look at that. Number one, your time. Time is money, almost. I mean, you can get more money, you can't get back more time. So sometimes time is even more precious. Um, but with that being said, you may be putting your time or your team's time into the wrong things. Your money should be producing more than you're putting in. Um, if it's not producing at least two times, you need to be doing something differently. It definitely depends on your margins. However, you really are gonna need to kind of cover overhead and time invested and things like that, regardless of what you're putting in. So really two times return on investment is, is essentially the bare minimum. For some people, that's a great profit margin. For some people, it's a little less great, but any return on investment is making you more money than you're spending. So you need to be okay with that. However, the goal is to always improve those numbers. So today we're actually gonna be talking about a step that I feel that probably 90% of agencies, marketers, and local businesses are really failing at. Um, I started to notice this when I was a marketing director uh, for businesses in-house. So I was in that position for five or six years. And that was the thing that stood out to me the most significantly was how poor the follow-up systems were, how little people seemed to actually care about systemizing this process and how they truthfully didn't understand that this literally will make or break your lead generation efforts. If you really think about it, you could get a hundred leads in a month, but if no one takes the initiative to follow up with those people, or if none of those people close, you've gotten nothing. I mean, you've got a hundred email subscribers and you're probably not doing email marketing. So it probably doesn't matter anyway. You've really wasted your money. You're gonna hope that those people will buy, but people don't just buy magically. They have to have a need, but they have to be pointed in the right direction. They have to be given the right solutions. For most local businesses, a conversation is required either on the phone or in person to make a sale. There are some local businesses who do take some type of payment online, very small percentage. So this follow-up process can be small or it can be very extensive. I prefer to have something that's extensive that covers all directions because people do not just go in one direction. You know, it should look like this lead comes in, goes to a sale. It doesn't, it looks like this. And then some people will drop off and some people will spend a lot and you really can't expect everyone to do the same thing. You also can't expect every lead to buy right away. So this piece to me is the most important of everything we've talked about because Yes, you have to be getting leads in order to be making sales, but if you're spending money on leads and you're not doing what we're going to talk about today, you're losing a lot of money and you're also losing the opportunity cost. If you're not doing lead generation at all, you're just losing the opportunity cost. So we're talking about big time risk if you're failing in this department. This is something I spend a lot of time on for my clients and for the people in local marketing mastery. Like this is a big part of what we're setting up in the program. So I'm going to cover the top things you should be doing, the types of campaigns you need to have, some tips to really maximizing your follow-up and taking those leads that you're going to be bringing in with the right ads and turning them into sales. So we will go ahead and get started. I'll share my screen with you. And thanks again for being with me here on day four. So again, converting leads into paying clients, the only thing that really matters in terms of marketing. So what is one of the first things that you need to remember. Well, number one, a lead 
is not a sale. So say it with me, everybody. A lead is not a sale. Do not expect every lead to buy. Do not expect every lead to be ready to buy today. Okay. These people are in all different stages of the process. This could vary depending on the length of your buying cycle. For some businesses, like an e-commerce store, the buying cycle could be seven days. You know, for someone like a remodeler or someone that has a higher ticket product or service, it's usually going to be longer. It could be one to three months. It could be three to six months. It could be a year. It could sometimes be two years. Ask a real estate agent when some of their clients convert after they start talking with them. There's a lot of factors that go into why someone will buy when they do. Sometimes it's not the right time for them financially. Sometimes it's not the right time in their personal life. Sometimes they don't have the other pieces in place that they need before they can make that purchase, even if they wanted to buy today. So it does vary for all businesses, but if you can really get in the mindset of this lead must be nurtured, no matter what, even if they're hot, ready to buy, I'm going to nurture them anyway. You also need to have immediate and consistent follow-up long term okay goes back to what we just talked about immediate follow-up is crucial because people are busy people have short attention spans if someone signs up for your offer and we'll talk about kind of the next steps that should happen but if someone signs up for your offer and that's the last step for them they are right then in that mindset that they need what you do that they're excited they're interested and they're also expecting you so if you call them right away, they're going to say, oh, it's probably that company that I just signed up to hear from. If you wait really for any extended period of time, they will not remember and they will think you are a telemarketer. I mean, I know I get a million telemarketing spam calls all day, every day. I typically don't answer my phone if I don't know the number. Sometimes those numbers are leads. Unfortunately, I don't have caller ID for spam calls. So most of the time, if someone leaves a voicemail, you know, I'm happy to call them back, but we also use email and text message as a way to communicate a little bit more directly, which is something we're definitely going to talk about. So doing this consistently and, and long-term, you can't call once, not get a response and never call again. Like that is in my opinion, true laziness. Um, if you invested time and money to get a lead, you have to realize that your prospects they are literally not sitting by the phone waiting for you to call them. They have lives. They are busy. They have families. They have stress. They have work-related responsibilities. Even if they really want you, they are not sitting by the phone waiting on your call. So real life example, um, I'm going to be working with an online bookkeeping service to help like keep track of our finances much more easily. Well, I'm super excited. I know I need them. Like I hate doing that stuff. And so um, one of my assistants signed up with the company. They're supposed to be calling me to like, you know, tell us our next steps. Well, they did call me. They left a message. I called them back, you know, didn't get someone on the line. Um, They've called me like four or five times. And guess what? I haven't answered because I've been in positions where I couldn't answer. Like I'm driving and I know I don't have the information I need or I'm on the phone with a client or with a lead or I'm, you know, on a call with my team. Your prospects signed up because they were interested, but it doesn't mean they have the ability to answer your every phone call or, you know, your outreach. So just think about your own buying behavior because I am going to call this company back. I am interested. I already know I'm going to buy, you know, it's, I'm a, a one sale, but this person on the other end, they don't know that yet. You know, they don't know that I've already decided to work with them. Um, and you don't know if that's the case for your prospects either. So if they stop calling me, it doesn't mean I will never reach out to them again, because I do know that I need this, but Maybe another business catches my eye in the meantime that I'm like, oh, they do something cool. Maybe I call and I get somebody live on the phone right away. What this company could have done better was having an online booking system. So I'm super busy. I have like a pretty full schedule and I love booking calls because I know that I'm available during that time. I've set that time aside to speak to this person about something that I really want. So they're allowing me to give them my availability, which I think is crucial. Very, very important with B2B, but also important with B2C because those people also have jobs. They could own a business. You don't know that. They've got family. They've got everything going on. 
So please just realize that if you're not following up consistently, you really don't care as much as you think you care or say you care. People who care, their actions reflect that and following up hardcore until someone tells you, no, I don't want to work with you. No, this is not a good time. Or please stop calling me. You know, that's the only way that you really should say, I'm not going to follow up this person again. So get this system systemized, you know, have a process, have a real process that's followed not only by you, but by your team. So I'm super passionate about this. I don't know if you can tell that yet, um, but being someone that was in-house, someone that was doing the marketing, my ultimate results were in a lot of ways out of my hands. So I'm pretty assertive and I kind of forced systems on these different teams uh, because I was like, it's, you know, this is a serious problem. These leads were emailing me, calling me because no one had, had followed up with them. And I'm like, dude, you're just, you're wasting your money. Also, my results aren't what they could be if your salespeople just answered the phone or picked up the phone in the first place. So I do care a lot about this. And, you know, I was just on a podcast interview yesterday, and this is something we talked about a lot. The fact that a lot of businesses get stuck in their ways, but their mindset is also wrong. You know, they, they're like marketing, marketing, what's our cost per click? How many, you know, website hits do we have? But if you ask them, how many of your leads converted last month? They literally would have no idea or the answer would be zero. They're not tracking it. They're not enforcing it. So please don't be like that. And if you're serious about actually growing a profitable business, understand that marketing is half the battle, that sales and follow-up processes is the other half. And the great thing about it is marketing, automation, follow-up, you know, this can be done all from one department. You can have your sales team taking the calls or taking the appointments, but we really can make life easier for them, but also more effective because let's be honest, human error <laughs> is strong. Sometimes people will say, say they're doing something that they're simply not doing. And you as the business owner need to know that certain things are happening. Or if you are the salesperson, this can be your responsibility to implement. I know there's a lot of people that are in sales that may be responsible for bringing in their own leads. And you know, you don't have to spend all of your time doing this yourself you really can automate half of it. So automation plus connection equals sales. Automation is gonna ensure that we have what we need to drive the sale in the right direction, but you've got to connect. You've got to get on the phone or be in person. Otherwise the sale is not going to be possible. So the last thing on this slide I'll mention is that you wanna make sure that people, if you are a retailer or like something that it happens in a physical location where you get a lot of walk-ins, you need to give these people a reason to subscribe so that you can follow up even if they don't make a purchase. So I know a lot of retailers or you know bricks and mortar locations that they're not even collecting info from the customers that purchase, which that is you know huge missed opportunity to upsell and increase customer lifetime value. But really simple things like um, signing up for a small contest or giveaway, some type of demo, some type of, you know, even like a gift card drawing where you're not giving something to everyone. Those are really easy ways to get their info and begin the online follow-up process. It doesn't mean that person's going to buy, but if they were in your location, that is half the battle for a bricks and mortar. They're going to be much more likely to come back a second time, but you do still need to stay top of mind and you need to find out what they're interested in so that you can give them the right type of campaign that's really gonna answer their questions and fit their needs. So these are some of the follow-up essentials that I would recommend. Number one, you need to have a CRM. And if you don't, you again are just leaving money on the table, but really flushing money down the toilet if you're investing in marketing already. If you don't have a CRM, it means that you are not tracking or you're not tracking effectively where your leads are coming from. Even if you have a spreadsheet of leads, do you know who closed? Do you know how long it took them to close? Do you know how many conversations were had before the close? Do you know how much they spent with you? Do you know what they purchased? You know, do you know who the salesperson was that took care of them? All of these things are so important and they truthfully will give you the data that you need to better cater your follow-up processes, your follow-up systems, your sales and your marketing long-term. The second thing that you're gonna to wanna to have 
is the ability to segment and track. So I did just mention tracking, um, really understanding the specific ads and the specific campaigns that these leads are coming from is crucial. I think I mentioned this, you know, in one of the, the earlier days, the lowest cost per lead ad is not always the ad that's producing the most paying customers or the highest paying customers or the customers that are staying with you the longest. That is what you have to care about. Stop worrying about some of these vanity metrics or these surface level numbers and start looking at how they relate to your sales. Okay, so segmenting, just like I mentioned with the bricks and mortar retailer, you need to know what people are interested in. You need to know which type of offer they signed up for, you know, how serious they are. There's so many ways that you could be segmenting your leads. And if you just all lump them into the same pile in the same campaign, give them the same salesperson, again, you're missing out on a lot because people have different needs and they will tell you what they are if you simply ask. But if you're asking and then not having their next step reflect that, then I mean, it's still not very great. You definitely want to streamline and systemize the follow-up conversations. So for a long time, you know, I would, I would hear from different people, things about leads not being qualified, this, that, and the other. Um, and so I took over lead follow-up personally for four months for one specific company. I already knew the leads were good that, like I said, they'd been emailing me, they'd been calling me, like they wanted to buy and people weren't reaching out to them. So I was like, okay, I'll do it. I'll track it and I'll show you what it could look like if you were doing this the right way. I got 85% of the leads to schedule an appointment on the first call. I mean, super easy. Um, once that process was proven, we then transferred it over to the people who should have been doing it all along. However, their results were not always the same as mine. And I wasn't trying to sell anybody. So people do have different levels of sales scale and that's just the truth. But I started to listen to their calls and it was, I mean, I want to say pathetic, but it was just really sad. They had no energy. They sounded like life was horrible. Hey, how are you doing? Yeah. So it looks like you um, signed up as a lead. Uh, what can I help you with? That is the wrong way to approach the situation. Um, don't just give these calls to anybody. You need to make sure that this person has been trained on what the process is. These, per these people signed up for a specific offer. You want to be excited. What is the goal of the call? The goal is to schedule that appointment or to, you know, get them to a certain place or to pre-qualify them in some way. So having phone call scripts and scripts for really everything else that you're doing in terms of your follow-up is really important. It's going to make sure that your messaging is consistent. It's also going to make sure that people who are doing things differently can do things the way that they should be done the first time. You definitely want to be using email sequences, messenger, text message, voicemail drops. Those are really like the five. Phone call, email, text, voicemail drops, and Facebook messenger. Text message is the single best way to get responses from people. So um, there are always people that will sign up and like opt in to get your text messages and then they'll want to opt out. You know, I personally don't really get it. You know, why did you opt in if you just want to opt out? But that's okay. There are going to be people that they will say that and you just have to let it slide. But when you see the results that come from the texting campaigns or the conversations that are started through text message, you will never stop doing it because 99% of text messages are open, even if they aren't responded to. Emails like 15 to 20% are open. I mean, that is a huge difference. So I don't recommend you blasting people who never opted in. You can send out a text blast to people maybe that were past leads, but you know, you don't want to be doing this to people who have no interest. You can use the text as a way to gauge interest and get them to the next step. So Voicemail drops are also really effective. Love using all of these things together. Um, that's when you're gonna get really effective because you don't know if your emails are bouncing to someone. If they're never getting your emails and that's the only way you're communicating with them, you know, they're never hearing from you. They could think that, okay, I signed up, what next? Nobody has ever talked to me. You definitely want to be making those phone calls, but even if you can't 24 seven, these other things are gonna be working for you. So make sure that you use multi-channel follow-up. You also want to have several different types of campaigns, new lead campaigns, appointment reminder campaigns, whether it's phone call, whether it's an in-person appointment, 
someone who doesn't show up for a call or an appointment, someone who is simply not ready yet, and more educational style long-term follow-up campaigns. So here are some tips in terms of phone follow-up. So I've done a lot of phone follow-up in my day and there are things that I see people doing wrong and things that I have just noticed really improve the results. So number one, you wanna take control of the call. Don't let the lead control the call. You're the business owner or the person in the business, you know what info you need from them to get them where they need to go. So right away, tell them how this is gonna go. If they signed up for an appointment, tell them, hey, I'm so excited you signed up for an appointment. What's a good day and time for you to come in? Why would you really go into anything else? If the purpose is to get the appointment and they signed up, do nothing but try and get them on the schedule. You definitely wanna have energy and enthusiasm, just like I mentioned a few minutes ago. I mean, it'll really kill a call. People reflect your level of energy and you want to act like, this is the best company in the world. This is the best product in the world. I'm so excited to serve you today. I also recommend that you don't qualify people too hard. So it really is a fine line and it's going to depend on your business. I have noticed that people who show interest, they do typically want to buy something, okay? For many businesses, unless you really only sell one or two things that there are just hard and clear qualifications for that, you may not know yet what this person wants or needs or can afford. And you need to find that out. So, um, you know, in terms of like the remodelers that I've worked with in the past, the thing that I hate when they do is they're like, what's your budget over the phone? The problem is, is that that person still, they haven't met you in person. Their trust may not be there yet. And a lot of times that's kind of like an abrasive question for people. You can still get around to that in different ways, but asking someone what their budget is, it doesn't mean they're going to answer honestly. They could say that it's lower than it actually is um, simply because they don't want you to try and max out their budget. And then you're going to have a skewed idea of what that budget actually looks like. And you're maybe going to think that they're not qualified when they actually are. Um, the other thing is they may not be the right fit for what they signed up for, but they may be a great fit for something else. So definitely keep that in mind. Hold on one second. I just encourage you to ask the questions that are only necessary. But if this is a call to schedule an appointment, schedule the appointment. I believe in meeting with the people that want to meet with you if they're interested in actually working with you. Because even if they don't buy right then, they could still refer you to family or friends or they could buy down the road. So as long as the interest is there in what you offer, I believe people should take the effort to meet with that prospect and educate them. So sometimes people don't understand the way that your business or industry works. So instead of saying, oh, well, that's not nearly enough money to get what you're looking for. You want to tell them, hey, so there's actually kind of a formula that can be used to identify, you know, what your marketing budget should be or what, should you, what you should be investing in digital. Typically, I recommend this or that. This is the reason that I do this. Instead of just saying, yeah, that budget's like, it's low, it's way too low. So we're, it's probably not gonna be a good fit. I mean, if I addressed my leads and prospects like that, I mean, I'd never sell anything. Um, and the good thing is, is that most businesses do have something to offer a lot of different people. Sometimes it might just be your introductory, like lower priced offer. But if you do a great job, that person can ascend through your value ladder and ultimately buy what they signed up for. Or maybe they don't and they keep buying the smaller things, but it doesn't matter. It's a sale, you're making money, you're converting your leads, you're increasing your revenue. So regard every lead as a potential sale, brand advocate or referral, we just talked about that, and guide them on the next steps. Don't just say, okay, you know, uh, thanks for the call, talk to you soon. Tell them, I really enjoy talking to you. You know, I've got you on the schedule for this time. I'm going to send you a confirmation email that's going to reflect that. You will get some reminders before our next call so you don't forget. On that call, here's what we're going to go over. Um, please have all the decision makers on that call. Really make sure that they know because, again, you may know your business, but they may not have any idea how this process works. So be really clear 
and educate throughout the entire process. It's just like with the marketing, educate people because they simply don't know 90% of the time. So here are a few steps to really having some success with your conversions. Realize the lead isn't a sale. Call immediately. I highly recommend integrating caller appointment booking. This is the number one thing that I do with all of my clients, even if they think that it's not a good fit for them or that there's no way that it can work or no one has a reason to schedule a call with them. There is a way because unless you're just trying to like give somebody a free coupon, you have to have a conversation in order to make a sale. So go ahead and give them a reason to have that conversation and let them tell you when they are available. You want to have a sequence for people who do not book because, you know, there's going to be a percentage of people that don't, even if you have that step and that's fine. Doesn't mean they'll never convert. It just means you're reducing the pressure on your follow-up. If you already have set times for some of these people. You also want to make sure that your pipeline is integrated with these things. So you can see how many people book, how many people don't book, how many people that don't book end up closing. All of those metrics are so valuable to you. And you want to make sure that all of your information is collected in an easy to see place so you can make educated decisions. You also want to customize campaigns like I talked about. Different people are diff interested in different things. If you want to get them on a call or an appointment, you can truly identify the best fit when you do that. But whatever they signed up for, whatever they purchased, whatever it is, you already know that was an interest. So make those custom. Don't use some generic, thank you for signing up. One of our associates will be in touch with you shortly. That's, it's boring. Nobody likes that. It's not making you stand out in any way. You also want to have those long-term follow-up sequences for the people who simply are not ready and follow up templates and conversion templates that are really going to increase success, but reduce the time spent. So again, return on investment is based on your time and your money. So we want to make sure that you make the most money spending the littlest amount of time possible doing these things manually. And your homework for today. Number one, you want to take an honest look at your follow-up processes. If you are the business owner, you really want to have an idea of what's going on in your business. When a lead comes in, what happens? Who is it going to? What's being said? What's the next step? Where does that person go? Where is the data reported? If you don't know that right off the top of your head, as I'm saying it, that's a big problem and you really need to address it. If you're the salesperson, take a look at yourself and say, what are my follow-up processes? If you are an agency or a marketer, Ask yourself if you are providing any of these things for your clients, if you're supporting them in this way, because the agencies that don't see great results, um, most of the time, there are a variety of things going on, but it's not because they're terrible at what they do, but it's because they're only looking at the front end and those are the ads. You really have to have a system that you can essentially give to your clients. If you are in the marketing space, you can't expect everyone to have this. But when the results come back on you, the same way they did when I was an in-house marketer, I knew if this is going to work, I'm going to force this process on you. It's going to become required because that's the only way to tie everything together. Identify where it is that you're failing. Decide to do better and make a plan of action or simply hire someone to help you. If you need someone to help you implement all these systems, we can absolutely do that. If you want to hire a sales consultant or someone to come into your physical location, identify the way the process should go, identify the breakdowns, absolutely do it. Um, like I said, this is something we spend several weeks essentially on in our two-month implementation program, making sure that you don't just have a strong front end with your offer, with your ads, that you have the back end that's designed to help you convert. So I really hope you've gotten a ton of value out of day four. I'm very, very excited to lead into our final day tomorrow and it's day five. So I don't know if you've noticed, but I talk a lot about taking action and implementation and that's exactly what we're gonna cover tomorrow. How can you take action in the quickest, most effective way? What are the strategies and the tools available to you to be able to better plan and better execute with a lot more focus and in a shorter period of time? Without this step, nothing that I've taught you has mattered. 
nothing matters unless you put it into action. Otherwise, you'll be in the exact same place that you were before. And you signed up for this challenge for a reason. And it's not because you feel like your marketing is as good as it's going to get. So make a commitment to yourself. Show up for this final day. I'm also going to be giving away a prize to one person who is live at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and so if you want a chance to enter, then all you have to do is show up, but really just show up for yourself because that's who you need to be doing this for. I don't need this help. I already have this. I already give this to my clients, but if you're here, it's because you do need it. So don't stop now. If you're on day four, make a commitment to finish strong in day five. Um, if you do want to talk to someone on our team about helping you implement all the systems we've talked about throughout the course of this challenge so far, I'd love to talk to you. There'll be a link in the post um, that you can just go ahead and click, click to schedule and, and see if it's a good fit for you. So otherwise, have a great rest of your day and I will see you on day five.